Well, welcome everyone. This is the uh, Columbus Comics Corner uh, for a special episode. We are uh, going to be discussing the pilot episode to Legion, Season 1, Episode 1. And yes. man, was it trippy. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, we're kind of just going to go ahead and get right into it, really, because um, we were just talking off air, like, you know, we could summarize it for you, but uh, also, we are going to be spoiling it, so if you haven't watched it, um, definitely come back and listen to it after you watched it, because this conversation will make way more sense uh, once you've watched it, and I'm not even sure if I understand everything that's going on yet in this show, um, but we're going to hop right into it. Um, so yeah, this is Legion from FX. Um, again, it premiered last night. Um, it. While we're, well, from when we're recording this, it premiered last night. Um, this <laughs> yeah. was this is probably my most anticipated um, comic book show because I I'm still behind on like Flash and um, Arrow and stuff, but Legion just caught my eye like just because one it was uh, you know Noah Noah Haley. Uh, yep. He's the director behind all of this, and I'm a big fan of uh, Fargo, the TV show that he's done. Uh, he did season one, season one and two so far, and season three is in the pipeline. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was uh, visually, it was uh, a stunning, beautiful show. Um, the budget in this, I should have looked up to see if I could find the budget in this, but I think this is probably the best looking comic book show to date honestly yeah um i would definitely agree that it is probably one of the better shows to come out um comic book related especially as of lately uh like you said i don't, I don't think we know what the production value is well it's, it, I, I, i'm guessing that uh they put most of the money into the sets as opposed to um the, the actual visual effects mm -hmm. i mean we do have a couple instances where we see powers being used we see him levitate some things and um, we kind of get some powers towards the end of the episode, but yeah, majority of it was the sets. Like the, the sets were amazing, especially um, the hospital sets. The specifically for me, the scene where he's in the room with the doctor, and the the room just seemed so huge. Like it just seemed abnormally huge. Like the chairs were big, the room was just so wide and spread out, and they just seemed so small in it. Like that was an amazing set. No, I agree. Um... Yeah, amazing set visually. Yeah, they're doing something right, and I thought that was like the perfect amount of humor to go with the the seriousness of everything that's going on. Yeah, because which is what I, I'll go that's ahead. what I was thinking. They, I was gonna say that's what I was thinking they needed to do with him because essentially, from his perspective, especially with his powers, not knowing that he has these abilities, he thinks he's crazy. And he's thought he was crazy for years, and we see we you know when we pick when we really pick up with him, um, we get the brief flash at the beginning where we kind of get a glimpse of him growing up. Yeah. But when we pick up with him in the hospital, he's been there for who knows how long, and he's been on all these medications, and everyone's telling him that he's crazy, so he's believing he's crazy. Yeah, and we're not sure what's exactly real or not real yet, because once no. he, because once him and Sid, um. You know, switch bodies. That's when things got really confusing for me. And I'm even when I because I watched it a second time, even then, like after that still happened, I was like, I mean, that's probably the point of this show to to make you think that this may be real. This may mm -hmm. all not may not all be real. But I think by the time by the end of the episode, when he met um, the the older lady, I forget her her name. Uh, what was her name? Do you remember her name? I do not remember her name, but she's essentially filling the uh, Professor X role. Professor X role, yeah, because she's also in Fargo too, and uh, Sid, the girl who plays Sid, um, she was in Fargo season two as well. And she's awesome. Yeah, she, she was, was awesome. awesome. As soon as like they said her name was uh, Sydney Barrett, uh, did that name ring a bell to you at all? Um, I, I th there's a character involving Legion, but it wasn't Sydney. Wasn't like Stacy or something like that. Uh, maybe I, cause it rang a bell to me. I, I, I know in the comics, one of his personalities, one of his most dominant personalities, is like Stacy or something like that. And it sounded like they might have switched it to Sydney. Like she might have. That, that's another thing that threw me off, cause I know a little bit about Legion. Yeah, I didn't. so I know he was a part of the New Mutants and that he's uh, Xavier's son. But yeah, yes. I, I never read much um, New Mutants to enough New Mutants to get a grasp of him. But yeah, the yeah, he was in the. 
I was just going to say, he, he's in the New Mutants. You are right, he's Professor X's son. He's mm-hmm. the one that's responsible for the Age of Apocalypse. Yes, indeed. Yeah, the whole Sid Barrett thing, uh, it's uh, a former member of Pink Floyd. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when they <laughs> when they named that, I was like, as soon as, right off the bat, I was like, this show is about to be trippy as fuck, and it was. <laughs> it, it it was, and it's funny you say that because um, I think I think one of the other things that played a heavy part in this show was the music. Yes. Oh yeah. Like, like they used the music very very well. Um, that part in the hospital when um after they switched bodies or as they they possibly switched bodies because we don't necessarily know if they definitely did um but when they went back in it was all red all and you saw the lights flashing and you heard that synth come on and that it kind of made cool. me think of stranger things a little bit yeah it did same here <laughs> i was like that's cool yeah the music the besides like the licensed music the music they actually wrote for this yeah. was awesome i really liked that but uh, my favorite scene though was the uh, was the last scene when they're getting him out of the out of that prison or not that prison but that uh, facility that facility. It facility yeah the facility that he's in um, that was awesome like it it almost seemed like it was a one take type deal like a raid yeah I, I was looking at that as someone who's into like you know behind the scenes type things with movies and TV shows and we've talked before about how we both like special features and I love seeing like behind the scenes about how they set shots up or how certain shots are yeah and uh one of my favorite movies of all time features a scene that is just one continuous take it's like a, a continuous take for like close to 10 minutes and so that's what i was looking at watching i was like this is like one solid take and i was trying to see if i could maybe spot where they might have been hiding the edits and the cuts and stuff yeah i couldn't but find it them looked, at all it looked like one yeah it looked like one <laughs> seamless take and i was like man because it takes a lot to do a, a one take and especially when you're doing one take that has either a lot of dialogue or one take that has um a lot of action it's hard to do those two types of one takes mm-hmm. and this had a lot of actions with dialogue sporadically in there yeah and i like how sid uh is um she's kind of like an amalgamation of rogue and Jean gray did you get that feeling yes. i kind of did the don't touch me thing but yet yeah. still she's kind of like got Jean's demeanor a little bit mm-hmm. and she's in, able to enter uh people's brains and whatnot if she yeah if she is touched so i do like how they kind of molded those two characters together for this if that was their intention um but yeah it was it was sweet and it was it an was, hour it was an hour. that thing an hour hour and seven minutes it was that thing was an hour and a half when it aired oh yeah well without uh without commercials <laughs> five commercials it was probably like an hour and seven minutes but mm-hmm. it was an hour and a half when it aired and that was commercials mm-hmm. um the, I, i've since it since it's aired i've seen a couple of theories and everything and heard a couple of people's reactions to the show mm-hmm. and um one of them was something i had thought at first when i very first started watching it was that um that there is possibly no um asylum that he wasn't actually in an asylum and that that's actually was his brain and all the inmates there are the different personalities. Because if you know anything about Legion, you know that he has all these different split personalities that, that live inside of his head. That would make I mean that, that could make sense too, because Aubrey Aubrey Plaza showed up after she died. Yeah. Uh, she showed up at his um, his sister's house with him, and was talking to him. Was like telling them how they're coming after him now. So yeah, because right, I hope she, because I mean she died and then she did come back at the end of the episode. So I'm wondering if she's gonna come back and play, and I mean play an ongoing role in this, and be one of his uh, split personalities. And see, that was the other thing too is is that from Legion, from what I know from him in the comics, there's been instances where he's accidentally killed people, and is it, when he does that, he normally assimilates that person into his personality into his... and become another personality. Okay. So so then. That's why, like, at first when I saw the asylum, I'm like, okay, these are probably his different personalities. Um, and then it kept going on, and I was kind of like, well, maybe this, he's really is in a mental asylum. And then when I saw that um, she had died, I was like, okay, now, if they're going to do it any time the comics, she's going to come back as an alternate personality. And then when she popped back up, I was kind of like, okay, well, maybe the asylum was real. Yeah. And, you know, since um, he switched places and essentially you know that when she took when um his body was taken over all that mayhem happened 
you know, because because I took it as she didn't know how to. Um, what, what was her name again? Cecile. Uh, yes. Yeah, I took it as she didn't know how to control his power, so she killed all those people, or at least killed um one person. Oh, you mean uh, Sid? I mean, yeah. Sid, yeah. I, that's that's what I took it as when they switch switch bodies. But I was like, since she doesn't know his power and he doesn't know his power. Neither one of them understands that he's going to assimilate that whoever dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overall, I mean, this is a, a really good pilot, and um, I'm looking forward to what they bring. Because again, I'm a big fan of um, Noah Haley. Because I mean, that was the one thing. Because I, again, I'm not f too familiar with Legion, so the one thing that sold me was the fact that the Fargo director was behind this. I wish I would have saw. Wish I w wish I would have saw who wrote this episode. Because um, I thought it was a well written episode. Um, you know, while it was slightly confusing, I think that's the point because he is yes. such a he is such a complex character, and they have all season to uh, kind of flush him out. And I do like the the idea of him um, becoming part of this new team. We'll, we'll call her uh, Foe Xavier for now. Um, Foe Xavier, yeah. <laughs> uh, so she's kind of like assimilating this team, and we don't know what the other powers of. Uh, the two people that were like following him that were trying to uh, rescue him earlier before he got kidnapped by the, um, by that facility team. Yeah. We, we don't know that. And also we don't know how far they're going to take his powers. Yeah. Because in the comics Legion has a ridiculous amount of powers. Like the, the, they kept showing the preview or they kept talking about how he might be the most powerful mutant that they know. Mm -hmm. That is no lie because in the comics, like he is psychic, telekinetic, he has pyrokinesis. He can time travel. Like he's got so many ridiculous powers in the comic that it's just amazing. Yeah. So they they have a big old sandbox to play in. That's gonna be dope. They but, do, and it's supposed isn't this supposed to still take place inside the the, the movie universe of the X Men? Um. It, at first, I heard it was confirmed that it was, but then I guess they came back out and said it wasn't. Okay. Um. But they did drop the mutant. They did say mutant. So I was like, oh. Okay, that's oh, good. Of course they did. I, <laughs> I was just going to say that it, it was good to see Marvel and Fox working together. Yes, yeah, because at the end it, you saw uh, Joe Casada's name and Stan Lee mm -hmm. on there. That's yeah. our executive producers. And, and then, like you said, we, we got them the, the mutant dropped so many times, and I was like, oh, this feels so refreshing. Yes. Like to actually see something that has Marvel's input into it, and the, and them using the term mutant. This is great. Yeah, in our in our uh, comments podcast, we um, on one of the new because I think we discussed the trailer, one of the trailers at least, and we were kind of talking about how you know Fox and Marvel kind of you know getting back into bed with each other slowly but surely. Yeah. This is and this is a good start. This is a damn good start for sure. I'm uh, thinking that this is going to be one of those shows, um, especially like you said, it, it, it's confusing a little bit, but. Look who our ride along character is. Look who we're following. He's exactly he's got some possible mental issues that he doesn't understand about, and I think that it's going to be confusing until the end. I think in the end we're going to get the, through the journey. We're going to get a few possible questions answered, but I think by the end everything's going to make sense. I think it's not going to make sense. He gets to the end and you're going to be like, oh, that's what such and such and such and such was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this this show. I feel definitely is going to have some uh, rewatchability. To catch on or pick up every little thing that has been like you know plugged in there, so they're all oh yeah because even even watching it even watching it the first time there were some things that I was catching like at the last second like the dude in the um the the, the bushes that kept hiding in the 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 grass yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. at first I thought I was seeing stuff and then I saw it again I was like there is a dude back there in the grass <laughs> and then um the the yellow eyed demon he was talking about the yep. um. The, the kind of fat dude who was just hiding out in the back every now and again, I think that's going to be his darker part of his personality. Wouldn't that be crazy if that was uh, uh, Mojo or Blob? <laughs> oh, that's he, what I he kept did, thinking. Yeah, his, his face did look like Mojo, minus some of the um, prosthetics and stuff Mojo has, but he did look like Mojo. Yeah. So that'd be cool if they brought Mojo. They could easily drop so many cool, uh, cool old school characters uh, into this show easily. They like, could, and I would love for them to do that. So I would assume that Fox has uh, the rights to Mojo. I would assume, since they have New Mutants and all I that. Would, 
I would too, because I'm pretty sure Mojo appeared first in the X Men. Oh, probably yeah, only right. appeared in the X Men. That's right, he did, didn't he? Mm-hmm. I forgot all about that. Yeah, the the amount of characters that they have to play with is ridiculous by having the um the X Men verse. So I think my that big frustrating with with what Fox was doing. Mm-hmm. So I think my big question would be, where does this fall in the timeline of Xavier? And yes. the X Men. Me too. Because if this is obviously it has to be like alternate universe. Because if this is based in the seventies, in the movie universe, you know, um, he was first class. Yeah, first class. He, that was in the seventies, and he was uh, younger then. So this is definitely mm-hmm. an alternate timeline. So I, I'll be, I'll be curious to see um, what they pull in to this to kind of give us a guideline to where this all falls in line. I'd be curious to see if they even reference Xavier or the X-Men at all. I could see him like probably like the last episode of the season. Maybe dropping Xavier in there. Like uh, at least hinting at him. Because we don't know who his parents are yet. And I mean his sister. Um, do you, did he have a sister in the in the comics? Not that I remember. Yeah, I didn't um, think so. I just don't. I just know that um, Professor X had him right before him and Magneto had their had their, uh, their falling out, mm-hmm. and he didn't even know about him. There was a hospital that they worked at together, and I believe his mom was a nurse or um, she worked at the same hospital, and you know they had a little affair, and she never told Charles that she was pregnant, and he didn't find out two years later about Legion. So I mean, I, I yeah, I, I wouldn't really know, or maybe he doesn't even know about him yet. And I'll come into play like second season or something. Maybe. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I mean, besides it being pretty psychedelic, and um, yeah, I, I did like the um, when he was in the uh, room and they were like pulling the machine into there because they wanted to like uh, do some tests on him. Yeah, so we're just gonna check your heart rate. Yeah, and like everyone, that like moment of silence because everyone's like, "Oh shit, is he about to freak out?" And he's like, yeah, that, that, "That awkward silence." Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, you're afraid of me." And then that comes into play like uh, a few scenes later when he, you know, shoots that uh, the pin in the dude's uh, face, which and was goes ham. Amazing. That was amazing. That was well paid off. Yeah, because they built that up. Because first he he was freaking out earlier and um, making the pin shake, and the dude, you know held the pin down. I was like, just, just calm down. Yeah, I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> and then they, they kind of kept referencing back to that pin. Yes. And I didn't even, I didn't even think like he's going to use it like that. I was thinking like, you know, he's using the pin to kind of gauge um, where his mind is at right now to see when he needs to, you know, when he's pushing too hard. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what was up with the and whole then, uh, dog thing. I'll go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, and then they did the thing with the pin, but that was going to be something I was going to get to was what was up with the dog in yeah. the cage yeah the dog in the cage and then the guy who was um sculpting the uh the wooden the dog. dog yeah so i wonder and i was wondering do you think that because i know that they're going to be hopefully bringing in people from the x universe and i was like do you think that could be like um is it wolf's bane i'm there's, not too there's, familiar which, with them well her oh her okay yeah, there, there's a mutant who actually like transforms into like oh, a. Okay, I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, she now. looks she looks like a she looks like a werewolf creature, but she can also transform into like a dog, I believe. Yes, um, I. Something tells me no, just because I know they are working on the New Mutants movie. Yeah, and that's where you would want to use her. Yeah, so they probably won't bring her into this. But yeah, that the dog thing was very uh, curious. Or it had me very curious about because. They didn't really touch on it. They just had the guy sculpting, and then they uh, showed the dog in the cage. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, so many, so many questions um, that will that will hopefully get answers to. Yeah, because that was just strange to throw in there and not touch on later. I think. Yeah. Who who are they? What you know? Government agency is this? What's this war? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in and the they were, um, the war at the end. Yeah, in the in the preview, it they called him the division. Yeah, they did. So. It was like division three or something like that. Yeah, division three. That, yep, because that makes sense because it had the two dots and the one dot on the other side. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah, I'm all on board. Um, I'm not sure if we will uh, continue to do a- each episode. Uh, we'll see if uh, schedules line up and whatnot. But I know I'm going to be I'm going to be glued to my uh, computer, waiting for this to come online to watch this. Yeah, and I, and I already uh, went ahead and set my DVR, so it'll nice. be important for me if I don't get to catch it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Cool. We well, got anything else for this for now? Uh, no, so far so good. Yeah. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm enjoying to see what it looks like to have Marvel and Fox working together mm-hmm. um, since since we don't appear this the, to be able to get X properties or, or you know that universe back over to Marvel just yet. Right. It's good to see this kind of stepping stone. No doubt. Yeah, I agree. And I definitely, um, I'm looking forward to everything that they have to offer for this. And, um, yeah, they're doing a good job so far. So I look forward yep. to it. And, so far, uh, it, so good. Yeah. So I'd give it a, let's give it a rating out of 10. Um, for the pilot, I'm going to give it a 8.5 out of 10. I think I too will give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, and that's probably because. It was a little. It, it, it's not bad that it was confusing. It's not bad that it was confusing. No. Like I said, dealing with the character and the subject matter, that's what I would have expected. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad that's not straightforward either. Yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that it it raised so many questions in the first episode. I just want to see where they're going to take it throughout the season. So many questions. Cool, everyone. Well, that is our quick little discussion on the pilot of Legion. Um, I'm sure we will uh, tackle this again. How many episodes are there, you think? I don't know. That's why I was like, I'm interested to see where they're going to take it, because depending on how big the season is. Yeah. I would imagine maybe 8 to 10. Um, if, if they're going the traditional, regular TV season route, it'll probably be about 12 or 13 episodes. Yeah. That's perfect. I'm fine with that. That's normally a traditional TV season. Sweet. Well, cool, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, as always, uh, make sure you check out our regular comic book podcast where we discuss tons of books. And this week, uh, we have a stacked show. We uh, Oh, man. We decided to make up for uh, that slow week last week. So we're doing a total of 10 books this week. And you, know what I, you know what I thought about? What's that? This week's episode is our giant size episode. It is. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Episode 20, Giant Sized. <laughs> awesome. Cool, everyone. Yes. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe, rate us, and review us on iTunes. You can find us on uh, the interwebs at Columbus Comics Corner Podcast. And until uh, then, peace. On a lonely, lazy morning. And when I see you rocking back and forth, whispering that it's all.